Podcast, your man Kalen, aka Normal Consumer, and I am back with another video, obviously, or we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? Uh, housekeeping rules and things out of the way, per usual, if I can make you chuckle, if you're just rocking with what I'm saying, you're vibing what I'm vibing, you're liking how I'm moving, yo, give me a like, subscribe, share, turn that bell notification on, so every time I upload something new, then you get notified about it. It's the point of a notification, right guys? So, today... We'll have a little conversation about, guess what, 5G, my guys and ladies. Because it's everywhere, but not everywhere. A little confusing, right? What? So, first of all, I've worked in, I've worked with mobile phones. I've worked at Verizon, T-Mobile. And the worst thing to me is always trying to explain the network technology to people because they're like, oh, well, what's 4G, 3G, blah, blah, blah. But that was a little bit easier than this whole 5G thing, right? So, let, let, let me give a little background. So, when I was working at Verizon last year, I had people come in and not argue, but argue with me about, oh, well, my T-Mobile phone's getting 5G. Oh, side note, this is no shade towards anybody. I have no skin in the game at any of these companies. Just a story. Back to it. So, a guy came in. He was like, yeah, my T-Mobile phone has 5G on it but it still moves slow. But I get 5G, so why should I switch? I'm just like, so you got 5G, which was promising faster speeds, but you're still getting slow speeds. And we, I live like right outside of Orlando, a little city called Davenport. Doesn't have the best connection for any mobile carriers. Let me put that out there right now. But Verizon just happens to be the best out here, right? So I look at them, I'm like, well, sir, you know, that's not real 5G. I, I hit them with it just like that. I, I know it's petty. You're probably like, what's that mean? I'm going to break this down. I'm going to try to break it down. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to get uh, the taste to a page so you can read more about it, more in depth. I'm not a scholar. Again, just a normal consumer. I'm just passing on some, some information to you guys because sharing is caring. So I told them, I was like, yeah, what you have is it says 5G on the screen, but it's actually 4G LTE+. Plus. Basically, what they're doing is taking a little bit of your 4G and just bumping up a little bit. And he was confused. So, to kind of try to help everyone else out here, there are three flavors of 5G. And I say three flavors because there's the low end, the low band, mid band, and high band. Bands are just frequencies for radio waves to move across, which is what our phones work on, radio frequencies. So, at the low end, the low band, that's the one you're probably going to see most of the time if as you're driving around. If you're in a 5G area, you're probably in a low band area. That 5G is actually, again, 4G LTE+. Plus. It basically takes the, uh, how can I put this? So you have your 4G, right? You have your LTE, and it has its highway. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, all these extra cars is rush hour. That, that low band 5G basically takes what little bit of space is left after all these cars, after the highway is open, and puts it on a one-lane highway. Takes that and calls that 5G. You're basically getting runoff from the 4G LTE, and they're somehow combining that and making it 5G, which is why if you look up, in a lot of instances, 5G is slower than 4G LTE. I know Verizon was having that issue to the point where I told people, just turn 5G off in this area. There's no point. There's really no point. Like, you can get it going either way about five ten minutes but it's not the blazing fast 5g you're expecting that's the one that co uh, the company's called nationwide 5g it'll give you a little extra speed in some instances but the main draw here is that it covers more people so you can put up a tower here and it will cover a lot of people in in, in either direction all directions boom 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 covering more customers that is the blanket one that's the one that's a blanket effect Get as many people on 5G as possible, even though it's not good. 5G, it's not bad. It's just not. It's not the real idea of what 5G is. Okay. So then, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump around a little bit, and then you have the high end 5G. That's the real life 5G. Well, I say real life. That's the one that everyone's aiming for. Those outrageous speeds. Those one gigabit per second speeds, which I have experienced. Last year, I went to Seattle. My wife, me, and her sister all went to Seattle. Why not? Because we wanted to. Uh, during our downtime in the city before going to Mount Rainier and St. Helen, before that, we were just walking around downtown. Found a little local coffee shop, right? 
And I looked at my phone and I realized I saw 5G UW Ultra Wideband, which is Verizon's true 5G. The speed, the issue with that is, the issue with high band is, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have the same distance as low band. It doesn't cover as much space as low band. It gives you all the speed, but over a shorter distance. The issue with that, the reason why I point this out is because the little local coffee shop was here. The hotel was here. Regular 5G and 4G fluctuations over here. 5G ultra wide band over here. And when I say here and here, I mean literally a block. That was the difference. A block was a difference between 5G ultra wide band and 5G just thanks to wide 5G. But when I was this block over at this 5G ultra wide band, oh my goodness, I did a OOKLA speed test. 1.3 gigabits per second. I mean, it was flying. I, like, it was it was fast enough for me to take a screenshot and share it with my friends. That's probably the most, that's probably one of the nerdiest things you can do, first of all. But they understood They understood my hype because they were like, yo, that's crazy. Second of all, no one takes screenshots off their speed test and shares it. Like, that's how you knew it was something big. I was like, yo, if this is what ultra wideband is really offering, I need this everywhere, instantaneously. And that kind of brings me to the second one, which we skipped over. So we had low band, high band, and now I'm not gonna put that finger up, and now we're going to the mid band. Now, mind you, all this is just kind of a rough overview of everything. But that mid band, that's the sweet spot. That's the one that brings you speed along with coverage. It's like the perfect marriage, it's the perfect, just boom. It's the too slow, not enough carriage, too fast, not enough uh, coverage, just right. It's the middle. It's just right. You're not going to be anywhere near as fast as the high band. So you're not going to get your one gigabit per second. You're probably be in the three, four hundred range megabits per second. I'm assuming I haven't had a chance to actually experience. Then over here, you still have some of that extra coverage. You get it moved over. It starts shrinking a little bit, but it's perfect. The right amount of coverage, the right amount of speed, people are happy. The low band and high band have been the ones that we've been seeing recently. We're just now about to be able to see a lot more mid-range. Mid-band, whatever you want to call it. Interchangeable to me. Because, and this is coming off the top of my head because I'm not an expert or anything. There was an issue where Verizon and T-Mobile, and presumably, or it might have been Verizon and AT&T, Fact check me. Where the bands that they want to use, the frequencies they want to use for their mid band 5G was being um, it was being shut down. Not shut. It was being blocked from them being able to use it because of the FAA, uh, aka the airplane governors. So <laughs> they were saying that the frequencies that Verizon and I think AT and T do not quote me. I could teeter forget. I'm gonna find out. And link this down below too. They were scared that the frequencies they were using was going to interfere with equipment that the airports used. Which I mean, let's be honest, that'd be terrible. I I'd, I'd rather be able to fly than die because I got 5G at higher speeds. I'm cool on that. But the telecommunications companies that already did their their due diligence, other countries around the world are using these same frequencies and they're having no issues with the airplanes. So the FAA, telecommunication companies, they've been kind of going back and forth. It's just kind of been a stalemate. Uh, I believe recently it has been deemed okay to be used. So now we should start seeing more mid-band 5G. Uh, you're not really going to notice it. I don't think it I do not think it's going to say the ultra wide band. From what I read, from what I've looked at, it'll just say 5G still, but you'll notice quicker speeds than what you would get normally on 5G. So I mean, it, you're... You're not going to notice it until you actually go to use your phone. You might look down and see, oh, 5G, that can be a flip of a coin. Is it nationwide 5G, which is basically 4G LTE plus, or is it the actual mid-band 5G? Presumably, we you won't know. You just have to run a speed test and play, like, okay, I'm getting 40 megabits per second versus 5, 600 megabits per second, whatever the speeds are. So you just kind of got to do that. Now, with Verizon, if you see 5G UW, that's your wide band. T-Mobile, I believe it's 5G UC. That is ultra capacity. AT&T, I don't know. 
Nagalati. I forget their abbreviations off the top of my head, but they have their high end as well. So, uh, yeah, just 5G is a fun, fun topic right now, guys. Like for, I said, I'm a normal consumer and I, I, I read things and I try to share knowledge. Obviously, I'm not experts off of, like some some facts escape me and some like fine points escape me but i'm giving you exactly how i would tell someone if i still work at Verizon or if i work at t-mobile yo this is what 5g is this is what it means boom 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 but yeah like i said this 5g thing is interesting but so was 4g too you had the was it the Wii max and then you had your your false 4g's your 4g e's and then finally we got lte which was just the standard Took a, took a while to get there. And now we're kind of in the same boat with 5G. You have your false 5Gs, what I'm going to call low band. You have your good 5G. You have your real 5G. Do you have your super real 5G? It's like it's like Dragon Ball Z. Base form, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2. Boom. Let's put it like that. I could have just said that and saved you guys seven minutes. I apologize. Oof. But I am done now. Uh, Try to just impart a little knowledge upon you guys. But hey, as I said at the very beginning, if you're rocking with me, if you like how I'm doing this, if you like how I'm moving, if I made you chuckle a little bit, go ahead and like, go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and share. Go ahead and turn the notifications on by hitting the bell. Ding, that way you know when I drop something new. And also, as usual, let me know what you guys think. Do you like how I'm doing this? Do you like the format? Let me know down below where the comments reside. You should know how that goes by now. Um, but yeah, it's your man Kalen, once again, aka Normal Consumer. Thank you for sticking with me through this video. I know it's a long one. And yeah, I, I, I will catch you guys later.